and uh, we're going to thread a labyrinth essentially um, and more on that later and what will you need in order to take part it was in the um, instructions but I'll tell you all you actually need is a pencil and some paper you know these um, We've got a whole box of paper here. Um, you could use tracing paper or coloured paper or scrap paper, any old paper you like. Um, or you could just use photocopy paper. It's not, it's not important, I'm just saying that you can use anything you like. Or what I sometimes like using is um, something old that needs recycling. So these are some, uh, some eight, an old 80 red from I think 2012, um, or an old road atlas, um, some nice pages on there that you could, could use. Or um, I've got some old books that have fallen to bits. And um, I think basically, and what I'm saying is you've got everything you need in your house probably right now to do this. This is some, I can make you rich. Um, by Paul McKenna, um, which is, it seems like quite a good thing to tear this up and probably recycle it in some way. Um, or else I was doing it wrong. So um, anyway, enjoy finding something to work on. Um, the other thing that you may need is something, oh, you need, um, so the first part is just paper and pencil. And then for the second part, when we actually get into um, creating one with thread, you need uh, a colour thread, uh, any colour that you like. I've got a whole box here. So it doesn't matter which colour. The point is to play an experiment. And then something to stick the thread down with, which is either a glue stick or a PVA glue and a brush. Now, if you need if you know that you've got these things and you'd like to go and get them, if you haven't got them to hand, or you think, oh, I know, I've got something in the cupboard upstairs, um, you've got about three minutes to do that while I play a video on how to draw a spiral labyrinth. Because today we're doing spiral labyrinths. This is an example of a spiral labyrinth. Um, these are words that are spirals. This is actually a Welsh one um, done by uh, Liz Picton who works in South Wales. It's very beautiful. She's had it um, foil embossed um, printing, just a spiral on there. Can you hold that up nearer to the camera, please? I can, I can, I can indeed. Look at that. Oh. It's beautiful. I'll take a picture of it and I can send it, send it in the chat um, in a little while. But it's very beautiful. Um, so um, I'm going to play a video first. I pre-recorded it because it's really noisy now the rain started and I thought it'd be easier to show you how to draw a spiral labyrinth um, and I should say something about that. Who's absolutely new to labyrinths and doesn't know it? Right, okay Melinda um, <laughs> and Jonathan. So a labyrinth, let's first start with what, what a labyrinth is. A labyrinth is a way of taking um, a journey um, without getting lost or without, it's just being held to me. It's the way of taking a very long journey in a very short space. Um, it's not a maze in the fact that you go in and you come out the same way. So you walk in, you go to the center, which is called the goal, and then you retrace your steps and you come out. So if you're walking a real one, like um, like this one, it's a very nice uh, process of going in, physically walking in, and then coming out again. And if you're walking this one, there are lots of twists and turns. This is the one at Chartres. There are loads of twists and turns. This is the pattern of the one in Chartres. Um, and every time you make a turn, you might think, um, you, you see the world in a different way every time you make a turn. There's lots of philosophy around labyrinth. But there's also a spiral form of labyrinth, which is like this advent spiral that I showed you earlier, where you simply spiral in and spiral back out again. And you might go in with a question or a, something that's bothering you, 
by the time you've walked in, especially on this one, you've lit the candle, and you've placed your candle, and then you've walked out again, you've done something, you've changed in some way. So going in and coming out has changed you in some way. Now we're just making little labyrinths today, and we're making spiral labyrinths, which are very simple form. So, um, so that's what we're doing. There are absolutely hundreds of patterns of labyrinths. Uh, where's my book? There's a great little book called Mazes and Labyrinths, which will show you that the Romans were doing it, the uh, Greeks were doing it, the, the myth of Theseus and the Minotaur um, is a famous one, which I hope you've all heard, where um, there was a beast in the middle of the labyrinth and it was, um, they sent sacrifice, human sacrifices in every year uh, to feed the beast. And then Ariadne rescued them by um, walking in and then leaving a thread um, to find your way out again. But actually in a true labyrinth, you can't get lost because the way in is also the way out. There's also a bigger book on labyrinth, one of my favorite ones, um, which is the world's biggest labyrinth is actually, well, I think it's the world's biggest labyrinth, it keeps changing, uh, is in uh, Italy. And this um, took ages to make and they made it from bamboo. And it's a beautiful book which has uh, lots of examples of labyrinth. Oops, I'm gonna have to turn my background off so that you can see me. Um, lots of examples of amazing plans and I mean, they're fascinating. I've, I've been looking at labyrinths for about uh, 20 years. Um, this is the actual one in Italy, made of bamboo. I think it took them about four years just to plan it. So you could do something today that will take you maybe 10 minutes, or you could spend the next X number of years just getting really into labyrinths and I really encourage you to do so. They are absolutely fantastic and there's also lots of games you can play with labyrinths. Um, a whole list here which again I can send you a little PDF. These are some of the games that we encourage people to play when we did this um, this one in Taunton. Um, they're, great. they're great for kids games if you, if you actually make a big one. Um, if you make a small one, you can just use it for um, prayer, meditation, just musing. And personally, I just like them because they're fun to make and they're simple. And I get lost in them when I'm making them. And that's the main reason to make it. So um, please feel free to put, you'd like to see these games, that's great. I'll, um, I will send the games in the chat while I'm, I'm playing the video. So um, feel free to chime in and um, Ask, oh, your camera doesn't work. Well, don't worry. Um, we'll let Perdy moderate the chat here. I'm going to share my screen. Well, I hope I am. And <laughs> I've lost Zoom now. <laughs> um, and I am going to play you a video of how to draw. This is step one. We're just going to draw a spiral labyrinth, which is a little bit different than the normal Celtic labyrinths that you might see. And they're just as fun to draw. And I can show you how to do those as well. But I thought. I thought some of you would probably have already done Celtic Labyrinth. Um, I thought I'd show you how to draw um, a spiral one, which is an, an Indian design. So let me just uh, share my screen. Hopefully you can all see it. And uh, I will get the right video up. Now I did this earlier in Photoshop. And I will play it now. So if you've got a pencil and some paper, follow along. <coughs> so you start with a piece of paper and you basically have to draw a triangle on the paper, which will become evident as you um, get going on this Photoshop. It's just an equilateral triangle in the shape of a mountain. And then along the sides of the triangle, you just mark off the midpoint of each of the sides. There you go, one, two, three. Excuse my 
drawing because I'm actually right, uh, I'm actually left-handed and I drew this right-handed in um, Photoshop. And then you mark off the points between those. So you, you mark off the midpoint and then you mark off the point in between the midpoint and the end of the triangle. I hope that makes sense. It's pretty easy to do. Is everybody there with that? Yep. A few nods. Okay, and then you start with the middle and you start a spiral and you just draw through the points that you've made on the triangle. Again, I'm drawing right-handed and I'm left-handed, so I'm quite impressed with my drawing so far. And then you go through that middle point and then down to the bottom. All right, I'm going to pause it there. So it's like a big question mark. You give us a thumbs up when you're um, you there. Go great. They're really there. Right. Okay. Then you carry on drawing um, another triangle within the triangle. So if you see, I'm just going to join that bit, the middle point to the middle point, and the other middle point to the middle point. So you've got a kind of uh, triangle in the middle. Right, and then taking the midpoint of that side, you literally follow it, the line round, all the way round, all the way round, and touch that point down to there. This is the same when you're drawing a Celtic labyrinth. I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but. Um, same principle really, you're just following the path that you made previously. Right now this, I've taken the bottom point of the labyrinth and I'm coming back round the other way and I'm just going to join the dot with the other point on the triangle and then go through that and just round a bit. Now if we take that away. Now from the very bottom, the other bottom point in the triangle, do exactly the same thing and go back the other way. And then when you get to the end, you join it up with the nearest point to you and make a nice curve on the bottom. Let me just right, and then you're nearly there. From the middle at the bottom, you're going back round the other way. All the way around. Ta -da! And there you go. You have a an engine labyrinth. I've taken the triangle away there so that you can see. And if you check the paths, it does work. You go all the way around the outside, and then you curl around, and then you spiral into the middle, which is a lovely way finished and kids absolutely love this because it's one of the easiest um, labyrinth shapes to go when you get to the middle you're just going Woo! Um, and they run around the end of it so um, done this shape both on paper and then oh, do you want to hold your 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 um, papers up to the screen so you've all done them great Oh, yours are better than mine. I like this. Yep. Right. Step one. Successful, <laughs> I would say. You right there, Gay? You good? Yep. Cool. Okay. Right. So that's the, um, I suppose, the fun, easy bit. It's a good party trick as well. I know there's lots of kids that really like, um, uh, let me stop the sharing that really like um, drawing labyrinths. Um, 
the Celtic ones are good fun too, but they work in exactly the same way. You just draw um, a seed, what they call a seed pattern. And in this case, it was a triangle. And in the Celtic one, it's a cross. Um, and I can, again, you can send you a little video on how to do that one. But I like the spirals and that's what we're going to focus on today. So, right, the next thing we're going to do is going to get a new sheet of paper. And you have to decide here um, whether you're going to paint with glue or whether, you, so paint with PVA glue or whether you're going to use a, a glue stick. It depends whether you like things wobbly or if you like have a bit more control. Now the glue stick will give you slightly more control, um, but the paint brush will make the paper wet and will make the paper bobble up so that you get a really bobbly, this is one I prepared earlier, uh, a really bobbly, you know, bumpy surface. And then sometimes the labyrinth go completely wobbly, which I really like um, doing. Whereas if you use, um, unless you're gluing to something hard, um, which you can do as well, you could glue onto um, a bit of card or postcard or a bit of board, a back of the cereal packet or something like that. Um, the, um, the paintbrush version will um, will make it wet and then we'll make it bubble up. But I like that, you might not. So have we got a vote on who's got a prick stick and who's got PVA glue? All right, got prick stick, prick stick, prick stick. Oh, I go, we're going, we're going for the dry option today. Right, okay, so I will play you another video. So just take some paper, whatever paper you'd like to use, and put it on your desk. You don't need much space. You also don't need um, yeah, you don't need very much paper. That that's fine. And actually, this is a tiny little this is a, a medieval labyrinth um, on a piece of tracing paper. You don't actually need very much paper, but if you've got a nice big sheet of paper, it's good to start with that and um, spiral into it. Or, like I say, you could recycle a bit of old map or book or whatever. Now, the next thing you're going to need is your thread. So you want some thread, so pick a colour that you like with your paper. I'm going to pick uh, red. Or you could use string. String is good too. I've got some string here. You just need a bit more glue. Um, but thread works with PVA very well. So if you want some thread. Now, um, the next bit, um, um, it really personalises your labyrinth. Michelle, you have a question from Jo. Uh, she says she hasn't got thread, but she has some thin rope from a catch scratching post. Is that okay? That's absolutely fine. As long as your glue will take it. You might need a lot more glue than us, but that, that would be fine. Yep. Whatever, whatever you want to use, honestly, it's, it's fine. So you need to take your thread or your bin wrap or whatever you've got um, and you need to start unraveling it and we're going to personalize it by making it the same height as you so this is literally a labyrinth made about made of you and this practice some of you who've been to my previous exhibitions will know it's called measuring to the saint um, it's a medieval practice where they would measure you from head to foot with a piece of thread and then they would curl up the thread and send it to the nearest abbey or cathedral where the monks would make a life-size candle of you and they'd light it and pray for your eternal soul. So if you were ill or um, if you'd even departed this world, they would be praying for your soul and its future in heaven. Now, I'm not religious or anything, but I really like the simplicity of that, of making a nice um, connection between you and, um, well, I don't know, something spiritual. So you'll need to stand up. This and you get your piece of thread and you unravel it slightly. If you've got an assistant, it's great, you can do it together. But if you haven't, then all you have to do is drop your thread down to the ground and hold it up 
and then put it on top of your head. I don't know if you can see it's right on the top of my head. And then I know how tall I am to the top of my head. So I know that I've got to break my string here. Now you can either just break it if it's thin enough or just use a pair of scissors to cut it. So that's all the way down to your toes, to the top of your head. Hold it in place and then cut it off. And you will have exactly the right amount of thread to make your labyrinth. Has everybody got that? <laughs> Let's see. Got it? Great. Now, the next thing is to find one end and um, just let the other end go and get your glue stick and start buttering your paper with your glue stick. When you use a glue stick, it's, um, you kind of warm it up um, by rubbing it and you don't need to rub too much of the surface. You just need to rub in the middle where you want your labyrinth to go to. And I'm gonna play a video because I recorded one earlier because it's hard to move the screen. So let me just share my screen again. Um, and put on quick time. Ah. Which one are we doing? We're doing the so on this one. I'm doing it on a, on a map, but um, it's the same process. So I'm choosing my threads here. I'm gonna zoom it along a bit. And then I'm gonna literally gonna start. So this is a bit of starting. So you're just rubbing the glue stick in the middle of your paper and then putting the end of your thread stick it down with your, right now you may get your fingers a bit messy um, I hope you're as messy as me. I quite like getting my fingers messy and I feel like I've done something. And you literally are just guiding the thread round with your finger. Now I know I've done this a few times, so I'm quite quick at getting it started, but that, oops, let me just, that's what it should, let me just pause it and there you go. That's what you're kind of aiming for in the middle. So literally just sticking the thread down. Now, if you're having any problems, you just need a bit more glue. So just take the thread away and, um, and rub the glue stick again, because sometimes if your glue stick is cold, it won't leave enough glue on the paper. But I take it from the fact that you've all got your heads down, or apart from Joe, um, that you may be all right. And you might be already into the process. I'm gonna carry on playing the video. So you literally just follow it round, follow it round. Like I said, I don't mind mine going wobbly. I quite like the fact that it was made by a human being and it's not perfect um, because I think it's more interesting, but you might like it perfect and that's fine too. So you can get it as good as you can get it. And you literally just keep going round, keep going round. Um, and following it through. Now, you're all probably at least five foot something. So it will take a little while. It will take, um, this will take about five minutes. And when you, when you run out of glue, you just um, put a bit more glue down in a circle around the, um, the place where you've been working. Make sure you've got enough glue. If it goes wrong, just peel it off and start again. One thing that you will, I think labyrinths really cultivate is patience. <laughs> but I may just be biased on that. It might take a little while to work out how much glue you need and how much you need to dig your finger in to poke it down and get it to stick. Or you might just be a natural and just, and hopefully your paper is playing and letting you um, stick. 
And in this video, I quite often accidentally touched the thread while I was um, trying to glue the, the, the glue down and, um, and just had to go back and do that little bit again. But as long as your hands are clean and your paper's clean, it should be fine. So while you're doing that, just to get, get lost in the curves, if you've got any questions, type them in the chat with your sticky fingers. <laughs> now, um, there are labyrinths all over the world, as I'm sure Joe knows, and some of the other labyrinth enthusiasts will know. Um, and you can find them all um, on the site. There's a, a labyrinth site which I will send you a link to, which um, I met the person who runs the site, uh, Kimberly, um, not long ago when I was, I'd done an exhibition, well, an installation in Southwark Cathedral. And she turned up because she'd read the, uh, about the labyrinth connections with some of my work. So it was great to meet her. And she's got labyrinths all over the world that you can go and visit, and find out about. Um, and a whole load of resources as well as to how to make them if you want to scale up and make big ones. Um, you can literally make them of anything. You can, uh, I've seen them in libraries where they piled up loads of books and made the walls from books. I've seen them uh, with pebbles. Um, oh, we live near the beach, um, often just take a stick or we'll find a stick on the beach and draw one in the sand. Um, there's also um, a beautiful one in Menorca in this place called Lithica, which I don't know if anyone's ever been to Menorca, but there's three or four labyrinths on that site. One's made of herbs, one's made of limestone, um, and the others are, are just made of whatever's around. Um, I'll show you a picture of that. Um, I've also seen labyrinths made of glass and of mirrors. There's some uh, Longleat made of mirrors by Adrian Fisher, who's a um, famous maze designer. Well, that's more of a maze rather than a labyrinth. There's one on St. Catherine's Hill near Winchester, and there's one at Bremer House as well, um, which is called a Miz Maze. Um, it's a very famous one, but you can't walk it, which is a bit of a shame because it's protected. So there you go. There's, there's mine as it's finish um, and you can see it doesn't take up very much space and they're quite um, easy to do I'm going to stop sharing my screen Jo says she's made them his shoes, scarves and beads just designed one on beads on a small side table. I'd be interested to, um, to know, Joe, which labyrinth pattern you've used, whether that's a Celtic one or a Roman one or a meander or... Um, where did my love of lab labyrinths come from? Um, I like the story of Alice in Wonderland and somewhere near Bournemouth, there's, um, this, isn't, this isn't where it originally came from, but it, it sparked my interest in it. There's um, um, an attraction called Alice in Wonderland or Alice's Wonderland or something like that. And they've got a maze in there. And I started looking at mazes um, and I loved getting lost in, in the maze and, um, and Longleat, going as a kid, going to the maze at Longleat. And then I found out about labyrinths and realized that there's a special type of labyrinth that you um, can't get lost in. And we were living on Dartmoor and our next door neighbor um, was a dowser and just gave me this book that was all about labyrinths and dowsing. Um, and it was so fascinating. That was, uh, how old was I, about 22? And that was it. I just started exploring labyrinths and I just love the fact that they've been around for thousands of years. In fact, they could have been around um, even earlier than the Greeks. The, Egyptians um, made labyrinths as well. And there's one buried under the sand 
um, near Giza that the Egyptian government have been keeping secret because it's um, a maze of underground, um, it's a grid labyrinth and it's um, just an endless um, load of mazes. Uh, it's not a maze because you can't get lost in it, but you can get lost in it because it's so big. Um, yeah, under the under the floor of the desert in in Giza. So um, yeah, I've made, and I started making. Um, the first one I did was in our back garden, and I laid the paving tiles down um, in the form of a labyrinth, and put a, a little bunch of pebbles at the goal in the middle. Um, and you could hardly see it, and so you would. I loved it that you. It was kind of hidden, um, and it hopefully it's still there. So um, yeah, that's where it came from. So Ali has said she's got a brush. So I will also play then the one. How's everyone doing? Has everyone finished with their? Yep, Melinda's finished. Jonathan, are you still going? Yep, you're doing. So oh, maybe we could see a couple of these. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. That's so lovely. Oh my goodness, look at the colours on that. That's just great. Fantastic. How are you doing, Joe? Oh, that's lovely and thick. I love I've loved that. Um let's see who else we've got. Oh, we've got quite a lot of people now. Ali's doing it. Oh, uh, Ali's done it with a brush. And uh, Donna. Oh, Patu, that's Tafu. We, that is gorgeous. So we've got some really, really bold, thick ones, and we've got some really lovely, delicate ones. Now, okay. So the next step with it is everybody is everybody good to go on to the next step? Because um, now that you've got your labyrinth, um, you can also do more with it. So you could just stop there if you like it, how it is. Or I quite like to layer things and play with things um, a little bit more. Um, and I, like I said, I've been doing them on tracing paper and all sorts of things. But So you can play with layers now. So you could, if you can find anything thin or see-through or... Uh, I don't know, like, um, you know, you get the plastic um, that wraps food, um, a sheet of plastic, or you could photocopy something. This is a photocopy of, a, a not photocopy, but you could print something out on your printer and put it behind um, so you can make a sandwich out of it. Or what I often do also is say I've got, like, so this one's on a map. So um, I might find something else to stick on there. Um, so I've got some little sequins here. Um, so I could stick sequins on it. And, and, or I could, I've got some little pearls. These are stick on, I guess they're not that good for the environment, but they're, they're kind of pre-stuck little pearls. So you could actually walk the labyrinth with, um, with the dots. Um, or you could draw um, on it, or you could do it, you could just layer it basically. This one is um, the labyrinth is stuck down on top of a whole load of layers, and I can see that some other people have been doing coloured coloured ones. Um, and you can also, like I say, start with a, a background and go on to that. I've got some more background somewhere and I've misplaced them in all the studio chaos. Oh, here they are. Um, you could paint a background that's just um, watercolour, um, different colours to paint on, or uh, to, to use. You could, you get all sorts of basically backgrounds and make a sandwich with your labyrinth in the middle coloured paper here, all different colours. Um, tracing paper is really good because you can lay it on top like um, like a lid. And here's, oh, here's some tracing paper. 
here's my my map. Um, I just lay the tracing paper over the top, and then I could glue it down. I often use um, you see behind me. I've got a sewing machine. Sometimes I I stitch around it to do something like that. But you can basically get creative with whatever you've got in your house. Um, other people have used like sprinkled it with coffee. It sounds silly or um, turmeric powder, all sorts of things. You could um, play with textures on top of your labyrinth because if you feel it once it's dry. When you feel it, you can feel you can feel the texture of the rings and the pathways of the labyrinth, which is quite nice. Now, also, if you have any old frames, or you can order these from IKEA. Here's a standard IKEA frame. Um, this is just how to maybe finish it off if you'd like to put it up in your house. You can take it, I sandwich it well enough. I can put it in the, in the little thing that it comes with, um, place it in there, and then stick it. This is um, like a box frame, so it's got a little bit of depth to it. So I can just stick that down. Oh, there you see. If I stick that down, put my labyrinth in, position it. And then put the backing on. It takes literally a couple of minutes. And then, oops, you've got a framed labyrinth. This is obviously not very well framed because I haven't done it very well. But it literally takes a couple of minutes. These frames are £2.99. Or if you're in the States, um, I'm sure you can get fairly cheap box frames for about the same. So like for less than five pounds, you can make your own labyrinth artwork and put it up on your wall. There you go, there's one on a map with a bit of tracing paper in front of it just to take off the edge. Um, so they're very, very, very simple. So um, what else have I got to say? Oh, I've got a challenge to set you all, which, Oh, hello, Anna. I can see you as well. <laughs> We're on the next page of the workshop. Huh? Um, which is, when it stops raining, to go outside, if you have an outside, um, if you have your own outside, to make a small labyrinth in your garden, um, using either pebbles or leaves or anything you find a around. Or if you don't have your own outside space, but you have access to a park or um, a beach or, or some outside space, to so just look around and find anything you can to help you draw a spiral labyrinth using the grid that we set up at the beginning with the, the triangle and just draw one out on the ground and see what happens and see. Um, obviously, we're not trying to attract people together in this uh, time of um, a social distancing but um, hopefully by walking in the labyrinth you'll be able to get some exercise in a very short space <laughs> small space and take a very long walk so um, any more questions I'm aware of the time we said this was going to be oh, let me stop sharing my screen let me see Oh, I've got some pictures. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. If you want to post your pictures in the chat, if you want to take a screenshot or a picture and put it in the chat, that would be great. And we'll go and have a look. Um, yeah, thank you. That's really great. Where did the design with the triangle come from originally? It's Indian. Um, or was, that's what I've been told. I so the the triangle shape um, as the seed is an Indian one as opposed to the Celtic one which is a, a cross with the corners. I can show you that very very quickly just for anybody that wants to learn how to draw a Celtic labyrinth. You can find this online as well but I'll do it very very quickly. Um, I can get a bit of paper which I have which is here um, very quickly, it's a very simple one. You draw a cross in the middle of a piece of paper, and then at the corners of the 
cost, you put four dots. Very, very simple. And then you literally join the dots. So you join the top of the cross. To, I'm upside down. The top, well, it doesn't matter. You join the top of the cross to the next dot. And then you join the dot next to it, to the side of the cross. And you keep going back. So the next one, I'll have to go, ooh, I'll have to go to, <laughs> to this one. I can't do that on a slide. This is why you need to watch the video. I can send you one as well of how to draw one. I'm sure um, Kay knows. Um, so you draw round and you follow it and you go to the next one. And then you take the next dot and you follow it round. Again, this is a great trick to teach kids if they love it. That's, that's a simple one. Could you um, hold it closer to the screen, Michelle? I can't really yep. see. Yep. Thank you. Ooh. Is that better? There are plenty of these um, little how to draw videos on YouTube and I can send you some links. There's a really good one, um, someone drawing the shark labyrinth. It doesn't quite start in the same way, but that is the seed pattern. So the seed pattern is the cross with the dots. And then if we wanted to make it more complicated and get more paths, and I'm sure Kay knows this um, as well, you just extend your seed pattern. So my next seed pattern would be a cross. But then this time with a corner. And then a dot. Oops, my knock. And another dot. And you do exactly the same thing. Oops. So that's that pattern. Expertly drawn, as you can see. And again, you start in the middle at the top and you join to the next thing and then you go along and you join to the next thing i'm trying to hold this up and then you go along and you join to the next thing and then you go back and along and you join to the next thing this is amazing to do this upside down and you just keep following the path a bit like we did with the spiral and the um the triangle but it's just Joining the dots, I'm going to have to leave a bit of room. And then one last one. And so then you get more paths. And obviously, once you've got the hang of, of that, oh, you can play with the shapes. So you can make them square, triangular, all sorts of things, and get more and more. Oh, look, there's, I can see some. Oh, I love this one with the sequins. Can everyone see that in the chat? Sharon, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, I love that. So you can play with the shapes. You could make this square, you can make this triangular. Um, there's also some really beautiful ones in my book um, of, uh, oh look, that one. You can just go, oh yeah, and the one on the front here, that's a star shape. So you can get really, really, really um, creative with the shapes that you do and everything. But in this one, like I said, um, we were just doing a spiral because the spiral is really simple and it's just you and a piece of thread and, um, and the labyrinth. So, so yes. Um, and there are also, like I said, there's games you can play, there are questions you can ask, you can use it as a decision-making tool, you can ask the labyrinth questions and start having conversations with it. There's so much to explore. And I will, right now, before I forget, um, in the chat, I will put in um, the um, links, whoops, I'm just trying to find my link, um, to the labyrinth resource site. And also, that's if I can find it. And also to um, 
I'll just put my video in. And also to um, some more resources. Oh, to the I was I'll put the um, the play sheet in um, for the games that you can play on there. So here's um, an instruction sheet. Can I do this? I hope I can. For walking a labyrinth and asking it questions. Here are some games to play on a labyrinth once you've made it. And like I say, you can make it with leaves or anything um, in your back garden. So no excuses, anyone can draw a labyrinth. Um, and the link to the labyrinth, why haven't I got that? Let me just get that and then, yep. Feel free to ask any more questions. If Purdy can read them out while I'm just getting this, that would be great. Uh, here we go. Here's the labyrinth links to the Labyrinth Society, which has a whole load of uh, resources on it. So, who? <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we're going to have hands up anyone who's going to go off and explore more labyrinthy things because uh, it'd be good to know. Yep. So Sharon's going to. Yep. Anna, great. Birdie, Bird, thanks, and Melinda, thank you, and Joe. I know you know Lois and Johnson. That's that's really great. So, well, um, thank you very much for t for showing up and um, having fun with us on this uh, Wednesday morning. And um, and please, um, yeah, post us some labyrinth links. And I think the hashtag. Um, oh, I had a hashtag ready and everything, and I've gone and put it. Um, on. We've got, well, ours is work on Wednesdays, so if you take a picture of your labyrinth or any labyrinths that you do today or over the next couple of weeks um, and tag Lighthouse and use the hashtag Workshop Wednesdays, um, then I can share that with Michelle as well and that'd be great. That'd be great. And um, if you're on Twitter or Instagram or any of those, I'm at, um, at Mixpits, um, M-I-X-X, P-I-X. Um, so do um, share and tag and all of that stuff. Um, oh, we've got a nice, some nice feedback, Michelle. Um, someone attended with their daughter and is going to continue to make more labyrinths. Oh, that's great. I love it. I love it when you can um, can share it on. Oh, and that, the other thing you can do also is do a double uh, labyrinth. Get If you've got a son or a daughter or some young ones around that want to play, you can lead them and then they can follow through the labyrinth and the other way around and play games on sheets of paper as well as um, out there. So, um, so yeah, you know, do that. So, oh, if everyone could um, hold up their lab, their spiral labyrinths, and I'll take a screenshot and put it on Twitter. <laughs> oh, what should I do? I did this one. I did this one earlier. <laughs> And I can put my background back on. Thank you. That was great. So yeah, get out there, have some fun. And oh, Lithica, I have to show you that. Look at that. One of my favorite labyrinths in the world. If you ever get to go to Menorca, go there. It's fantastic. So look it up. The Labyrinth of Lithica. Magical place. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Purdy. Thank you, Lighthouse. Thank you, and thank you everyone. And bye. <laughs> bye.